Mailbag Monday returns once again. And let us see what we have here. So this thing says, One Piece Mechanic Repair. Hmm. Mechanical Repairs. Not sure if I'm doing that. In fact, I know I'm not doing Mechanical Repairs. Oh! This looks like Mechanic branded solder paste. Classical Mechanic for export. Um, take the fake authenticity sticker off. No, it won't come off easily. Should I break into this? Sure. Oh, what do I have here? Made in Hong Kong. Counterfeiters will be sued. Mm hmm. So take that, counterfeiters. Maybe that is a real anti counterfeiting sticker on there and not just a clone of one. Regardless, it's covering up the information on the top. Now, that's probably not the best thing to do because it's probably going to. Well, that wasn't really an air seal anyway. Let's. Oh, but that is an air seal. Okay. Oh, and it's got a classic uh, kind of clip art sort of dude. Okay. So you can see in the bottom here that we have HK Mechanic QC SP30, manufactured 2018-04-13, shelf life one year. Okay. I think that is the same brand as, where is it? Yeah, it is this solder paste uh, that I've got in the syringe, which I used to, what did I, so I, yeah, I, I tried to use it in syringe mode, but it didn't work very well that way. But I ended up using um, a stick when I, just to smear some solder paste on. When I put this thing together, you remember this thing from, from our buddy at Universal Solder? Yeah. So that's the first time I'd ever tried uh, using solder paste, and it turned out pretty well, I guess. But maybe this will be a little bit better for smearing on rather than having to extrude it out of that uh, syringe. Let's see what I paid for this. One piece mechanic repairing solder, soldering paste XG 20, 20 grams. Um, 63.37, so it's not exactly 60.40, but it's close enough. It's, that's that, uh, special magic, what do they call it, eutetic mix, I think, or something like that. Anyway, um, 25 to 45 micrometers, new. I'd hate for it not to be new. Uh, bought it from King Electronics 15, paid $2.60 Canadian or buck ninety-seven American, and of course, free shipping. Next in, we have washcloth. Washcloth? Really? Somehow I'm hoping that it's not washcloth. No, no it's not. It is a lapel microphone or lavalier microphone. Interesting. I must have ordered this back when I was experimenting with microphones um, before I bought the... Uh, the condenser microphone maybe so what do we have here we have the a microphone with a little windsock just a little guy like that windsock's always nice so these lapel mics are lavalier microphones officially is what they're called um tend to be omnidirectional which means they're good for putting sort of close-ish to the source of sound not exactly, but you don't have to be too uh, precious about exactly where they go, um, which is why you see them clipped onto ties and uh, and uh, collars. And some people clip them onto a hat brim or something like that. Uh, I think Adam Savage built one into the corner of a frame of a pair of glasses. Okay, so... And there's the microphone. It has a tippering sleeve, 3.5 millimeter jack on the other end of it. I'm going to guess that this is probably a condenser because they often are. Yeah, it's probably going to be just one of these little condenser microphone modules inside it, I'm guessing. 
the same module that's on that little guy. That's that's my guess anyways. Um, so you just need to throw a bit of voltage at it. Uh, one piece clip on lapel microphone hands free wired condenser mini lavalier microphone 3.5 millimeter. I got it from Everyday Jewelry. They've currently got it on this auction, which mm, might have a few minutes left on it, depending on what, when you see this. Um, I paid a dollar Canadian for it, so I probably got it at an auction from them as well, but I can't find all those records. So it does say that it's omnidirectional here, which we kind of guessed already. Um, adjustable gain, no it doesn't. Adjustable transmitter setup, no it doesn't. Base tilt switch, no it doesn't. Compact and lightweight, okay fine, I'll give you that one. Extended frequency range, a response, eh. Flexible, yeah, whatever. Frequency response tailored, I doubt it. High feedback rejection. That is not usually a feature of an omnidirectional microphone. However, in some of these pictures for other people selling them, it shows it connected to a phone. It's an audio source. Hmm. Maybe I'll try that. Don't know whether it'll work or not, but I'll try it. It also shows some of these other ones, including this one here, in the listing that's currently available as being a tip ring ring sleeve, which mine is just a tip ring sleeve, so that might be different too. I might have to connect it to my old uh, something or other that's on my computer. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, let's try this. So I just hacked together a little adapter um, just to go from the 4-pin uh, TRS to the 3-pin TRS and connect it to the camera and let's see how this one sounds. Okay, so this now is the uh, new lavalier mic plugged into the rock band microphone interface that I hacked together quite some time ago. Um, and it's clipped onto the collar of my shirt right now, just kind of blown behind my beard. Actually, yeah. I turn my head. I might hear some scratchiness from my beard. Hmm. That's a problem. Okay, so now I've just moved it and I've got it clipped onto my glasses just up above and to the left of my eyes. So we'll see what that sounds like. Next in we have plug. It makes a slight rattling noise. That's interesting. Okay, it's that five pin male and female. I used to call these uh, Amphenol circular connectors. I'm not sure what the real name for them is. I'm sure the name will be. Where's that screw? It's missing a screw. That one's got both of them. Oh, that sucks. Unless it's stuck inside here accidentally or something. No, it's missing that little screw. Damn it. Anyway, um, these are this connector here, I think, I hope. Five pins. Yes, they are. So, the reason I got these partly is in case I want to make an extension for that. Partly because this other cheap soldering iron replacement handle that I got has the world's worst connector on it. It is, it just barely fits. So I want to replace it. Um, if I ever, or when I need to use this one. Um, this one over here that came with the Beku Cheap Heiko knockoff iron works perfectly well and I have no problem with it. But I think I just want to have a spare one on hand, you know, just in case. I guess the other option I could do, hmm, I could make a two to one and have both irons connected and just put a switch between them so that I could have different tips and go quickly between them. That's an interesting idea. GX16, two slash three slash four slash five slash six slash seven eight nine pin male female wire panel connector aviation, aviation connector. That's what I was thinking. JM probably for the store. Um, I paid 320 for the set of two of them. I'm going to link to this search here. 
But I got mine from Galaxy Center 13, who appears to be in Malaysia and is currently selling an unspecified one. It could be any of these, and they don't have a selector in this listing, so I'm not going to link to this specific listing. But anyway, um, they're selling that whatever it is for about the same price right now. But here's the important part. They are a 16 millimeter diameter plug. They're rated at 400 volts, five amps. Um, that's in use. Uh, withstand 1200 volts. It claims uh, fairly high inductance or resistance on the in, the uh, insulator, and less than 10 milliohms contact resistance. That's an important part right there. Um, zinc and alloy, or zinc alloy and bakelite, yeah, whatever, and available in multiple different pin configurations. So GX16 seems to be the generic style of these connectors. Okay, fine. The fourth thing, expansion board module and plastic patch. Ooh, it's two, two, two things in one package. Or so it claims. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 jackpot. Woohoo! Hey, what do we got here? A whole bunch of whatever these are. Are these all the same thing? Yeah, those are, and then this is separate. Okay, so we'll take a look at this first. This looks like some surface mount devices. They are AMS51117 5.0, which means they are 5 volt voltage regulators. Those are, in fact, the same voltage regulator that you will find on these kind of uh, breadboard power supply units. There's a 3.3 version and a 5 volt version there, and you just select from between them using that. I think I mentioned this somewhere else, or maybe in somebody else's comments. Um, the, I don't really like these things, and you won't see me use them very often, um, because... When you accidentally overcurrent one of your voltage rails, which means you're overcurrenting one of these guys, they tend to die in a short circuit between the input voltage and the output voltage, which means all of a sudden, instead of having 3.3 or 5 volts on your project rails, you will have you know, 9 to 12 volts on it, which tends to end badly for whatever you've got on your circuit board. Uh, so to my plan for eliminating that is rather than just leaving these jumpers as jumpers, I've taken some of these, uh, poly fuses, self-resetting poly fuses. I can't remember what current they are. I think they're quarter amp or third amp or something. And I use those as the jumper just to protect myself from my own stupidity. Because when you're jabbing, uh, DuPont wires in, you can accidentally hit the wrong spot or if you're not paying attention or splash against the lead of something. And especially if you're in a hurry, not paying attention, half asleep, been drinking, all of the above. 10 pieces AMS 1117, LM 1117, 1 amp, 5 volt, SOT 223, voltage regulator new. I got these from DIY Box. $4.31 Canadian or 99 cents American. It's just a stock part. I didn't even, didn't need to uh, bother trying to find it cheaper by auction because... This is like a dime a piece. Yeah, you can't get much cheaper than that. Okay, what else is in the package from that same seller? Huh, it's just a little a little board here. Let's get closer. Oh, those boards are also uh, the AMS1117, but this is the 3.3 volt version. Okay, so this is upside down, V in, V out with a couple of capacitors and uh, those capacitors yeah a couple of capacitors a 106 and 104 on the input and on the output just for smoothing an led and a 1k resistor i'm guessing the 1k resistor yeah it looks like it goes to the led okay so that's just a an arbitrary voltage to 3.3 voltage uh, uh volts a uh, little regulator board and Oh, and it even comes with pins. How nice. Well, looks like I got 10 of those. Okay. Also from DIY Box, 10 pieces, 4.5 to 7 volts, down to 3.3 volts, AMS 1117-3.3 volt, power supply module, AMS 1117-3.3. 
It's not really a power supply. It's just a regulator board. And it's got some smoothing caps on it and stuff like that and filtering. That's kind of cool. And it's got a little LED on it for good measure. But uh, 10 of them, I got them for $2.36. And now for the last and largest, we have expansion board module. Woohoo! Oh, that's not an expansion board module. That's a multimeter. And if I remember correctly, this is the one that my Patreons asked me to order and take a look at just to see if it's as good a cheap multimeter as some of the other cheap multimeters. So far the packaging is, you know, pretty suspect. Um, I'm probably going to take a, do a separate video on this one at some point in the near future. Um, it's got one of those, it's got one of those, it's got a battery compartment. Actually, let's, uh, before I get too deep here, let's see what I paid for this thing. Digital XL 830L LCD multimeter voltmeter ammeter DC circuit volt tester checker. Um, this one came from CZB6721960. I paid $7.90 for it. Uh, however, no, I didn't. That's what it's going for right now. I paid $8.04 for it. Hmm. The price has changed. Hmm. Okay. Um, oh, wait. Currently, they're selling it for 25 frickin' American dollars shipping or 33 Canadian. Yeah, that ain't right. But I did, in fact, get it for a buck more, but none of this excessive shipping. I'm guessing that that means they probably don't have very many left in stock. Yeah, five. But they don't want to take their, uh, their listing down while they're restocking. That's what I think that means 100% brand new we not offer battery um 1999 is the maximum display 200 millivolts up to 600 volts yeah i'm not sure if i would use this thing for anything over uh, maybe 110 volts if i'm careful uh ac yeah not again um Current between 200 microamps and 10 amps, uh, 200. Is that an omega? Really? 200 range or ohm range up to 2 meg range. It has a 200 milliamp fuse in it. Oh, good. I can use it in the winter outdoors when it warms up to zero degrees. I'm not going to do a full test now. I think I mentioned that already. I'm just going to see if it works. Uh, it turns on. It does have a backlight. It's probably very, very similar internally. This one doesn't have a, a backlight on it is the thing I immediately notice. They both got that cheesy transistor tester. Okay. I'm going to just test one thing. Test that. Oh, wow. These leads are cheesy. Even more so than, than these ones. Actually, they're not even the same. No, these ones are pretending at being sort of shielded all, and these ones are just, yeah. I know, I've got the same. So I haven't touched my power supply since I did the uh, video repairing my... Uh, or re repairing the battery leak damage on that good multimeter. So it should be set still the same. So I'll turn it on. Yeah. That's close enough to 5 volts for me. For anything I'm going to want to do. Should we check it against its uh, cousin here? What do you want in the cheap Chinese meter? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll play with this one a little bit more. And, uh, test it against some better meters later but it's probably going to be the same as this one internally i'm thinking okie dokie here is the haul today today's mailbag monday items a good spread as usual so quick uh once again thanks to my patreon supporters for suggesting that i get this thing and uh, give it a bit of a review and a quick test uh that guy took one month to get here the voltage regulators took five weeks to get here. 
the solder paste took seven weeks to get here. Wow. Um, these round aviation connectors, the soldering iron connectors, took 24 days. And the cheap, uh, kind of horrible sounding lav mic took is that one month. One month, actually minus one day to get here. Cool. Oh, uh, well. Thanks, as always, for uh, stopping by on my Mailbag Mondays. I really do appreciate it. Um, and thanks, as always, extra special thanks to my Patreon supporters for suggesting things to uh, to review, because that's a privilege that they get. They also get to see these, uh, these videos a few days in advance of the rest of y'all. So, there you go. Um, all right. I'm out. Talk to you later.